back to the Michigan Business Beat, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman, remote at my house. But we are going to go up to Midland right now. We're going to spend a little bit of time with Tony Stamus. He's the president and CEO of the Midland Business Alliance. And Tony, I think we've known each other in several different occupations, if I'm not mistaken. Right. I think the first time I met you, we knew the entire same group of people. And I was just surprised I hadn't known you before. But yes. <laughs> You know, it's amazing how that worked. Uh, you're, ab- you're absolutely right. And of course, Tony's background is political. Also, you were uh, several years at the uh, Small Business Association of Michigan, did a wonderful job there, and then moved back up to Midland, which is near your home and your roots, it is. Uh, to, to head up the Midland Business Alliance. Uh, remind everybody about the Midland Business Alliance and what you Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, a couple of years ago, the community leadership really looked at the Chamber of Commerce, which is a great legacy chamber, Midland Tomorrow Economic Development, that, you know, the mission is the same. And let's let's focus in terms of helping businesses, growing businesses, attracting businesses. So brought it together. We've got a couple other great partners, a, a longstanding uh, for-profit and a tech uh, support company that helps with nonprofits. And so it, it's a great group of individuals with just a shared, a shared vision, shared mission for our community. Well, you've done a great job up there, as a matter of fact. And the last time we saw each other was probably up at Mackinac, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been a little while. Uh, what, what? Give me some of the highlights that uh, that you guys have had. Yeah, you know, I, I think it continues to really be a strong uh, economy. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of investment. You know, a number of years ago when Dow and DuPont came together and they split, um, now, you know, Dow is still just a, a key leading partner here, but DuPont's active. And then out of that came Corteva, who's uh, high tech agriculture took the agricultural legacy components of DuPont and Dow. They just invested, you know, over 250 million in terms of the local community, and so that's exciting. Um, you know, our, our healthcare systems investing uh, into a cancer center, uh, My Michigan Health, and they partnered with U of M. Um, so, you know, really a lot of good things. But what we see every day is, you know, one of the things we do for our businesses is we do ribbon cutting. So we take the big scissors and we go around and we. We do ribbon cuttings for new businesses. And I think coming out of the pandemic, there's been a lot of pent up demand. And we're doing, you know, one week we had four ribbon cuttings. And so that's exciting to see uh, entrepreneurs with different ideas, passions, and just trying to help them. uh, Because that just really helps make the community great. Well, listen, when you have to sharpen those scissors, you know you're on the right track, right? Absolutely. Uh, I remember, Tony, a number of years ago visiting um, kind of an innovation center that, uh, that it was mostly comprised of Dow spinouts, like patents that Dow didn't want to pursue and they'd start these companies. Is that still in existence? And, and is there much tech transfer coming out of there? You know, I, I think, you know, you do have, you know, in this transition, because we always say, you know, Midland has, you know, the highest PhD per capita uh, in, in the country. And so you've got a lot of folks who have had careers and maybe, while they're still doing the career, they want to do another idea, or they've left that and they have this great idea. And so, what we've done with our innovations, we've actually partnered with a couple other folks. You know, we, we don't we always look we don't need to be duplicating efforts. So we partnered with CMURC uh, in terms of uh, our Renaissance Zone, in terms of business accelerator funds, and that's really been a great partnership. CMURC has got offices in Midland, Saginaw Bay, and Mount Pleasant, and so that's really really worked well. And then we work with SBDC on the business ideas out there. And so that again, I. So I, I think we've kind of taken that concept and said, okay, how do we how do we work with folks who are in this space? And uh, you know, so far we've seen really great success in that. Yeah, well, that's that's important to keep that churn coming in. That's a, that's a real growth pattern. Um, how about help? Help has been a problem for everybody. Your talent issues. Are you doing? It, it is at the top of the list uh, for for everyone. You know, when we talk about their challenges, that it always starts with talent. And so. You know, we're trying to, you know, how do we grow Midland? But frankly, we've got to work as a region in terms of the Great Lakes Bay region. Uh, We've got a lot of just, you know, Midland's a wonderful community. We love it, the city of modern explorers. But how do we partner with our Saginaw and Bay and Mount Pleasant, you know, in terms of attracting people here? And we've we've got a a great group that are working together on that on a daily basis. And, you know, it's a challenge you don't just see around Michigan, but around the, the country. And some of it's our demographics. Some of it are other challenges. But I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to keep, uh, you know, getting that message out. And we think, uh, we, you know, we're working on housing and broadband and child care and those, those, you know, trying to address those issues and make sure that Midland and the Great Lakes Bay region is a place where people want to come and stay. Um, so I want to just harken back to your uh, political career and, and talk a little bit about in general, um, you know, this midterm election. Uh, I have found myself 
at venues hearing personally from candidates more than I ever have before. And I think I have this internal realization that this is a pretty important election, no matter what side of the aisle you're on. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I think it really is. And I think, you know, in all the noise, I mean, there are clearly some different philosophical approaches. And I think it's important to kind of step back from the noise as best as you can. And that's tough. I mean, it hits us everywhere. But just saying in terms of the philosophies, in terms of the decisions this represents, what closely, you know, it's never going to be perfect. I mean, that's, you know, it's the best system in the world, but far from perfect. And so, but, you know, people need to be engaged, to get frustrated, but be engaged, be involved, uh, make sure you vote, make sure your voice is heard. And, uh, you know, our, our, our country's went through a lot of challenging times in its history. And yet, you know, our resiliency has been our strength. And I think that that's, it's important that people don't get discouraged. Well, let me share this thought with you. When people look at me and say, boy, our country is really screwed up right now. I want it to go well. Then you don't know anyone that grew up in the 60s. <laughs> we have a legacy of that. And yet oh, from our founding fathers. We couldn't have been more weird. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Stamen, it's always good to spend time with you. Tony is, of course, the president and CEO of the Midland Business Alliance. Good to see you again, my friend. Great to see you. Thanks, Chris. All right. You're watching the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman. 